am not a relationship guru. I'm not a hypergamy guru, okay? Listen, I respect the level up culture, but I'm not the woman that's going to teach you how to get money out of men. Excuse me as I kiss the sky. My name is Salsa Ray. I give lifestyle and wellness advice. I will give you advice about love, spirituality, financial management, entrepreneurship, because you know, those are the things that I've been interested in most of my life. So I'm gonna teach you what I learned along the way, okay? I am not a relationship guru. I'm not a hypergamy guru, okay? Listen, I respect the level up culture, but I'm not the woman that's gonna teach you how to get money out of men. I am the woman that is gonna teach you to go out there and get your your own bread and them having money is a plus you heard me cuz I'm a boss <laughs> that's what I do so I'm minding my business scrolling you know I ran into shenanigans that's kind of what happens when you're on the social media and I see a couple of people talking about this whole guy taking a girl on a date that's a hundred dollars but him only tipping the waitress five dollars the question is, is this dude a Dusty because of it? I saw it on Yanni's Instagram, okay? I saw it on my girl Juju Facebook page. I was like, okay, this is a thing. <laughs> okay. So here's my two cents. Just because he doesn't give the waitress 13% doesn't mean he's a Dusty, okay? <laughs> he just kicked out $100 for a date that's got to mean something ladies that's got to mean something to you you can't just depreciate that value all right it's a hundred dollars you better be lucky some dude ain't out there taking you to go get chicken wings out here having you at buffalo wild wings <laughs> first of all they lemon pepper all right with me but that's not the point the point is as a woman as a woman with class elegance wealth i was always taught that a lady leaves the tip anyway. So if you're on a date and the bill is $100 and your date puts a $5 bill on the table as a tip, you as a classy, elegant, wealthy lady, you take $50 out your purse and you slam that on the table for the waitress. That's how you handle it. You don't sit up here and classify this dude as a dusty. It's your problem. You the one that feels some type of way about it. Listen, I always been a good tip. I always been like the type of person that tip. When I was younger, I didn't really tip well because I didn't have any money. But now that I'm older, it's like, Pah. you know, once I started making money, leaving $50 tips and $100 tips made sense. One time I was at Olive Garden the day before Thanksgiving and I left a waitress $500. Leaving a tip is not a hard thing. Leaving a tip is something that a woman is supposed to do on a date and a lot of women do not do it. It is your responsibility to leave a tip. But women don't think that way and I think it's very selfish. I think it's selfish for women to keep calling a man who spent $100 on them a dusty simply because he gave a waitress $5. If you have an issue, it's your problem to fix. So you go do what you need to do and show how valuable you are. Listen, the date isn't just so you can interview him. The date is also for him to interview you. Don't forget this. Some of you ladies are so narcissistic that you aren't even looking through the mirror to see what's on the other side. When you gonna do some self-reflection and stop looking just on the surface of what you see. If you out here calling a man a dusty after he done paid $100 for a meal, for you and took you somewhere nice and you worried about how he treating somebody else but you haven't even gathered up enough strength to dig inside your own purse and get this woman some cash come on man you need to think about this y'all ladies be out here tripping especially the hypergamy ladies and any person that is listening to the sound of my voice is probably calling me a pick misha at this moment i'm the last woman you want to call that because I'm the last woman who wants to be married, in a relationship, cohabitate. I don't want to do none of that. I'm actually good on that. Let me tell you why it's so easy to not love a man. I can't love a man. I was watching this video from Black Ram 313. <laughs> that entire video is why I can't love a man. 
or would it tell you every single reason why? Perception that men have of women in general. It's disturbing. I'm Buddhist. I'm not Christian. Some black men automatically assume I'm gonna be the Bible thumping Christian every time I mention the word God. See, you don't have to be Hebrew or Israelite to simply reject Western principles. It was from me meeting so many superficial men that made me start rejecting everything that had to do with American culture. Because all men cared about was fat asses, boobs, pussy, what that mouth do. I'm trying to build a family with a man. I'm in the house paying my bills, going to work every day, working a regular job. I'm making a nice little salary, but it's still under $50,000 a year. I'm working hard as I can, trust me, just to show this man that I'm a good wife and I will build with him. But you know what this nigga worried about? Lil Wayne's new album. Well, that was many years ago. And I ain't turned back since. American consumeristic culture. Black men are so guilty of smothering themselves with that shit. They gotta have a nice chain. They gotta have a nice car. Don't forget to put rims on that shit though. And when you go to the ATM, make sure you get enough one so you can make it rain at the strip club. That's what these men caring about. You wanna talk about the measure of relationships? Every well put together woman I know is staring in the face of some man whom she would love to be with, but he can't slow down fast enough to see that trying to impress his homeboys by collecting pussy is not necessarily as important as building a friendship or loving a woman. The assessment of strength, length, and value inside of a relationship does not have anything to do with monetary figures when you're dealing with a woman who has her head on her shoulders. And don't even get me started how neglected women who have their head on their shoulders are. Because nine times out of ten, men overlook these women all the time just to look for the woman that they think is beautiful. Oh, and let me not forget this. She gotta be light-skinned. What do I consider a waste of time? Those shallow-minded men, those men who can't even factor in nothing that a woman says out of their mouth because their ego and pride has taken over their entire being. Nothing that a woman has to say will penetrate through him because he done made up in his mind and he write about everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Men are not considered a dollar amount to women who have their own. The height and girth of your sex organ means nothing in the eyes of God. And nine times out of 10, when a woman is looking at you, she looking at you through God's eyes. That's why it's so easy to love you through your mistakes and your stubbornness and your feeble-mindedness and mistakes and lies and cheating and ETC, I can go on forever. Yes, the world has some kind of fascination with entertainment and celebrities and athletes actors and wealth, the upper echelon of society. Yeah, because they teach us that's where a better life is. I don't remember the last time anybody glamorized poverty. I lived in poverty. You know what entertainment does? It takes people away from their personal pain every day. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting to look at something beautiful sometimes when everything you see around you is harsh fucking reality. So taking a break from going to a job that you hate Oh, that is awesome. Well, that is heaven to so many. So they cut on the TV and watch Empire, Power, The Real Housewives of wherever the fuck, Love and Hip Hop. They watch other people have problems. They watch make-believe problems and drama, horror movies and comedies. Ain't that what YouTube is? YouTube is like court, you know? It's like two lawyers. Like when I see YouTube beef all the time, you know what it reminds me of? A prosecutor and a defense attorney going at it, trying to prove to a jury who is the best storyteller. Cause it ain't about truth. It's only about lies and who could come up with the best lie in America. Cause the lies are easier to believe. Now I can tell you one thing a self-help book ain't never done was teach me that I could live the life of a celebrity if I rub up next to a man. You know who taught me that? A man. Men teach women that. That's why women try to get all beautiful, get the fake boobs and put on the waist trainers and try to put on the fake hair and got the eyelashes just batting for you. Because the only thing that men take pride in is in their money. 
So the only way a woman could feel like you care for her is if she take every single dime you got. I used to be a model, so I met a lot of women like that. And what was interesting about me is I was never that woman. I was never that woman. And it would be so amazing for me to see these women be that. Cause I wasn't brought up to be that way. And I never thought being that way was appealing. And I never thought being that way would get me anywhere. I always thought my smile would get me somewhere. My kindness would get me somewhere. My personality. <laughs> but let me tell you something. The world slapped me right back into reality. Even though my expectations for life or from a man has a lot to do with self-improvement. And I don't mean financially. I don't mean economically. Hell, I don't even mean socially. Can he improve my spirit, my character? Can he teach me more about principles? Can we enjoy life and look at the stars? Can we swap ideas? Out of the 36 years of my life, I only met two men, two, who came remotely close to that. And one is my daughter's father, and one is a man that I dated last year, his name was Daddy-O. Oh, we literally used to watch the stars together. Count them, name them. Oh, you have no idea what's in the heart and mind of a real woman if you could actually sit there and say that women are feeble. See, I want to be a better person from my soul, you know, from the inside out. That's what I want. As for marriage, listen, I used to live and breathe that. I couldn't wait for my wedding day to come. You heard me. I wanted my little veil on and my little train. See, I didn't want them to throw rice. I wanted them to blow bubbles because I knew that the rice would hurt the birds. But it wasn't until I was 30 that I realized that that shit was never going to happen. And that TV and romantic comedies and entertainment and all of that stuff that was taking me away from the harsh reality had me fucking fooled. I woke the hell up so fast, you heard me. And when a woman wakes up, greed does not drive her. Materialism does not drive her. Superficiality does not drive her. American culture is no longer appealing. We become no longer obsessed with that poison. But let me tell you something else that I learned as I woke up. Men want superficial. When I woke up and I looked around and I saw how many men were still sleeping, I knew I was doomed forever, forever. Because you can try your hardest as a woman to try to wake a man up, but nine times out of 10, men like you aren't listening. You guys are just so sure, you're so sure that women are such ugly creatures. Women are here to hurt you, they're here to despise you, they're here to use you for your money. See, not all women know a lot about social science. Not a lot of black women know that they should marry higher in class in order to become better women. It's a lot of men out there who believe that women should in fact choose better in relation to who they're dating or marrying or having kids by. That way, no more Neanderthals will be born. Get with a man that has a higher IQ. Get with a man who knows how to be financially stable. Get with a man who knows what it means to be a father and a husband. That way we can build a better black community. So I don't understand why women who do choose to do that should be chastised or looked at as women that can't be loved. That's just funny to me. I'm a Buddhist woman, a polyamorous woman. I'm conscious and awake. Once you see the world from this point of view and this perspective, everything, everything that you learned your entire life sends your world crashing down. And I see why so many people are so afraid to wake up, so afraid to be conscious. Because once you get to this level, oh, you see the world in a whole nother light and it becomes so much harder. It becomes so much harder for you to find friends. It becomes so much harder for you to find a partner. You done outgrew everybody mentally. Spiritually, you don't outgrow everybody. And anytime you try to explain it to them, they don't get it. They think you're crazy. So to all of my Hebrew Israelites or Pan-Africans or new generation alpha males, the world has created a brand new pedigree of women. And I hope you tap into those women very soon, honey. Cause you missing out big time. But I think what a lot of women are assuming is that if a man spends $100, 
and he only gives the waitress five, that means he doesn't have a lot of money. Because men who have resources are usually very generous with their resources. This goes back to the conversation that I was having the other day about coffee dates and how men who are of high value do not ask women to go on coffee dates. So what a lot of women are trying to say is that men who are wealthy don't leave $5 tips. How don't you know it's not a test? What if it's a test? What if he out here testing you to see what you do? Just like you out here testing them. Mm-hmm. Great, better watch out.